back to Skyhawk Sports Talk here from Zaxby's on the Skyhawk Sports Network. Visiting with Emma Schaefer from the Skyhawk Equestrian Team. Good morning or good afternoon now. How are you? I'm good. How yeah. are you? Thank you for joining us. And uh, let's talk about you. Where are you from? I'm from New Virginia, Iowa, which is a little bit south of Des Moines. Mm -hmm. How many hours from Martin, Tennessee? Like nine. Now, that's a pretty good trip, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's far enough I don't go home all the time, but yeah. close enough that I technically could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Um, you're competing against Baylor on Friday and Delaware State on Saturday. How's the season going so far? It's been really good. We're, our team is really coming together, and our culture has only gotten better. Um, we're really excited for this trip. Let's talk about you and equestrian. Uh, you and I were talking. I've done radio since since I was 15. Uh, you've been riding horses way before you were 15, right? When did it all begin? Um, so my mom actually trains horses. So even before I could walk, before I could talk, probably like as soon as I could sit up straight, like yeah. <laughs> I was in the saddle. Yeah. So before I don't even have the memories of probably the first time I was sitting on a horse. Yeah. So how cool is that, that she is a horse trainer? So at the house or did she go somewhere? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what was that like growing up right there with horses all around you? Yeah. I mean, it just, it was built into my life, you know, mm -hmm. um, I'd go to school, I'd go to the barn. I'd come home, I'd see the horses, you know, like it was always a part of my life. It's not something that I could escape even if I wanted to. <laughs> it's in the DNA. Uh -huh. uh, horses are different than other animals. How? They're, they're like kind of a human in a way, like they're very personable and they have feelings and, you know, they're kind of, if they don't want to do something, you have to m convince them to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not just going to stand idly by as you make them do things yeah and when you, when you get them from when they're very small or when they're cold what is the term I, forgive me if i but in, it's impressioning or something like that or do you know like yeah i mean it's impressioning that's yeah. what it's called okay yeah i actually at my house we have a couple brood mares and um we have some foals so this year I, I actually have a weanling yeah. Philly. So we've yeah. been spending a lot of time with her and getting her used to people and leading and all that kind of Watching stuff. Watching them grow up quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to me how fast after they're born, like they can walk and they become very uh, adept at what they have the yeah. ability to do. Almost yeah. immediately. Yeah. 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 It is true. The first time I saw that, I, I thought it was a miracle. Your background uh, at the collegiate level and even prior to that is phenomenal. You're a 20 time PTHA world champion. Yep. Yeah. What does that mean? Um, so that's with the Pinto Horse Association, mm -hmm. which is just a different avenue, I guess, that we can show our horses, like, kind of um, throughout our lives. Like, it can be youth. It can be amateur. Um, you can be showing in the association when you're 65. Uh -huh. Like, it's yeah. forever, as long as somebody wants to do it. Mm -hmm. But I think that those um, world championships kind of ranged from horsemanship to Western Pleasure to Hunter and Your Saddle, Equitation, like, so you it's could win. You broad. could win. You could win a couple of world championships mm -hmm. at one event. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Because yeah, you're not old enough to have won 20. <laughs> not <laughs> in one uh, yeah. year. <laughs> but then also a 17-time ABRA world champion. What is that? And again, that's similar. That's with the American Buckskin Registry Association. Mm -hmm. But again, it's just a different like avenue of showing. Um, and same thing. Like I can win seven at a show or whatever. You know, yeah. you can as many classes as you're entered in. Technically, yeah. you could win in. You're humble. Very few people can say I'm a world champion at anything, <laughs> at anything. Um, you've done it 40 a times. times. 40 <laughs> times, yeah. When was the first time and what was that like? Um, I'm not totally sure, to be honest. I know um, when I was in the 13 and under division for with the American Buckskin Registry Associa Association, one of the like first ones I remember, is I actually had two horses competing for what we call an all-around, mm -hmm. which is kind of like in the division the most accumulated points. And the first like big thing I won was with both of these horses. I was champion and reserve champion. Wow. And that yeah. was the first time that that had happened. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. That's definitely like a big memory. No doubt. Mine. How did you find UT Martin or how did UT Martin find you? Um, I just kind of started touring colleges you know when it, was, when it was that time and went to a couple of them but when I came to UTM I 
really just I knew kind of immediately like it just kind of had the same hominess as I was used to and I was like I I want to go here you're from Iowa right yep I've been to Iowa many times um I always kind of like Tennessee but a little different yeah. yeah what are the differences um we don't have like the as much wood I guess I would say <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. like I guess Tennessee yeah. is like pretty broad like you have yeah. rock the mountains like on one side of it and mm. like Kentucky yeah ishness on the other side mm. but I would say I was you kind of think of Iowa as being cornfields and yeah. cows and pigs and that's yeah. not entirely wrong um but we do have some wooded areas yeah. I is guess the I'd corn say. palace in Iowa I don't know what the Corn, corn Palace is. It's the greatest. It's the biggest corn museum in the world. Probably. You're a world champion. <laughs> you, yeah. Have you been to the the Field of Dreams where the movie I where have. you walk into the cornfield? Yes. That's magical. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Very cool. I remember tell, watching that. Tell us about the team this year, about your teammates. It's just a really cool team this year. Our atmosphere is really good. Like I said before, um, like I just feel like we all have each other's backs when we step in the arena or in any kind of aspect of life. You know, I go to the barn and say, I got a test today. And mm -hmm. everybody's like, you're going to do amazing. You've got this. You put in the work. Like, it's going to be great. And yeah. it's kind of, it transpires on both ends of things. Your sport's a little different than other sports in that uh, our basketball players don't go feed the basketballs. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so what's a day What's a day like for you? Um, it kind of depends on the day, but we usually practice, like, four-ish days a week typically mm -hmm. and for me I do two events so that means my time split between both the horsemanship and the reining mm -hmm. um, so like today I woke up and went to practice and my practice is from 10 to 11 but I was actually there before that I was there at probably yeah. like 8 30 starting to get the horses ready because I was also getting a horse ready for a teammate so I got there around 8 30 got the horses ready and then we will walk from like our stables down to the agricultural pavilion mm -hmm. and do our practice there, walk them out, get done, and then bring them all the way back Yeah. and undo them and take care of them and make sure that they get all the care that they need after they've put in that work. We see this sometimes because the greenway is mm -hmm. right by where the horses are, which is, yeah. Um, so yeah. I guess you see a lot of people in the community. Yeah, yeah, we'll see people walking along the path, and we'll wave and smile, say hey. Sometimes they'll want to pet the horses, so we'll take a little detour. <laughs> you also do community work. What's some of the things you've done as a team in the community? Um, my favorite thing that we do kind of like religiously is we kind of adopt a family for Christmas. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah. we'll go as a team or in small groups, and we'll go to Walmart, and we'll get gifts and stuff for different families, and we typically – typically do a couple families I think a year so mm -hmm. it's, that's just one of the things that I really like yeah what's your major I'm a health and human performance major with cool. a concentration in exercise science okay and then I also have a minor in psychology and what do you want to do I want to be a athletic trainer an athletic trainer so your mom's a horse trainer you want to be an athletic trainer <laughs> yeah what sport does it matter not necessarily. I think just at least at like the college level or greater since people are more serious about it at mm -hmm. that point, but not married to a specific sport. You've been successful in your sport, uh, successful as a Division One athlete, successful as a student. What does it take in to balance all of that? Plus, your sport is very time consuming. Um, I think just learning, you know, how to manage your time, how to rely on others, um, especially in the sport. It's taught me that it's not all about me, especially coming here to school where it's a team sport instead of just an individual sport mm -hmm. and being really being able to rely on others like for help. And that means, you know, faculty, teammates, whoever it may be. That's been a big shift and has definitely helped me. Yeah. Awesome. Good answer. Anything else? Have we missed anything? No. I don't think Did so. a fantastic job. <laughs> yeah. What do you want to accomplish this season? Well, I mean, obviously I want to win. Yeah. That's kind of the main yeah. one. You, you know? are a world champion <laughs> multiple times. Yeah. But, I mean, just making the memories. You know, I'm a senior. I'm going to be done with this chapter of my life. But just putting it all out there, there's nothing to lose, you know? Yeah, no doubt. Can, can you, as we go out, can you give us one memory that you'll have with you for a long time that happened with the UT Martin question? Yeah. yeah, so the last time that we went up to, or maybe not the last time, but We've had some good trips to Delaware State. Mm -hmm. um, we've beaten South or Southern Methodist University there, SMU. We've beaten TCU there. Um, it's been we've had some good rides, and just the feeling of that when we do make those big moves. Um, so 
I'm looking forward to another one of those. So you may have to go visit and vacation there years from now <laughs> just for the good memories. Just here. for the memes. Awesome. If I quit this season, I still be the latest. Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast is brought to you by Weekly Ford Nissan. Let's talk volleyball. Uh, you, you've got two events remaining, and that's it. Here we are towards Here the end of the are. season. Yeah. Here we are. Been a tough road, tough, tough season, and, um, you know, I really can't pinpoint uh, why. Uh, but we're going to continue to try to battle. we got two more matches this week, and, you know, it, it's, it's there for us to, to still make our way in the tournament if we can take care of business both mm-hmm. Wednesday and Thursday. Um, going to be a challenging task. I think USI is playing really well right now. They beat Lindenwood twice this week, um, this previous week. Um, but, I mean, I, I believe we can do it. We just we just got to be able to put it yeah. together and, and get some confidence. And uh, we were obviously pretty disappointed um, how this last home weekend went. And um, so just trying to pick up the pieces a little bit and, you know, put everything in, get everybody on board, Rowan. Yeah. these last two. Uh, there's a bunch of teams bunched right there in the standings. Uh, so it would certainly help you to win. For uh, sure. Yeah. For sure. And um, I, w- I was talking to our Ryan earlier, SID, and um, math's not my strong suit trying to figure but – but I think um, if we win the last two, I think we control mm-hmm. being in the tournament. Um, you know, uh, SIUE and um, Little Rock play – and my calculations, which could be wrong, um, I think it doesn't matter if they split or either wins both. Mm-hmm. As long as we win both, we can we can crack in. Gotcha. So, and that's a good and now I could be wrong, but that's but that's a good position to be yeah. in. Yeah, knowing that you can control that, and then once you get to the tournament, anything can happen. Anything can happen, no doubt, yeah. no doubt. And I can't even um, quite get my head there. Um, I, you know, I, I've just, I'm really, really hunkering in on these last two and being a Wednesday, Thursday match, you don't have a lot of time for prep or recovery. Mm-hmm. Um, so just trying to get the girls ready. You had your senior night, uh, as you honored Kayla and Haley and Olivia and Ryan and Zoe. Talk about that. Goodness. Uh, you know, it's tough. It, this group of seniors is really, really special to me. Um, you know, Several of them have, have been, like, part of my family mm-hmm. through the years they've been here. And my kids literally don't know life without them. Uh-huh. And, you know, that's, um, it's, it's sad to, to see this kind of come into an end with them. And, and for them, they've, they've put so much work in helping to build this program. And so it's been tough to see for their senior year um, it be more challenging. But I, I, I told them... Um, you know, the, the easy times when you're winning, the, you know, it just makes everything a little easier. Mm-hmm. But if I had to go through the tough times, if I had to be having a hard season, um, there's, there's no one I'd rather be going yeah. through it with. That's a huge compliment. You know, I've always said this. I mean, it's not like you've not had a successful season. You have. But in comparison to the last couple of seasons that you have, it's not where that is. But at the same time, you're working just as hard. You're doing all the things that you did in the last two years. The only difference is the win-loss the record. Outcome. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And, you know, I I didn't – you know, we're down on numbers this year as well. We did lose a lot. Um, I didn't expect the season to go quite how it, it is. I mean, I don't think any coach, you know, mm-hmm. th- mm-hmm. you know prepares for that. But um, I, I'm really focused on trying to make the, the best of this on the way out and um, really focus on kind of rebuilding back – where we need to be and you know we've got a really really big class recruiting class coming in next year and um we'll be young but I, i'm excited to kind of to you know get some new bodies in and and work it but i hope i really hope we can we can lock in and make a good run here at the end last question how does the end of this season impact next season you know we've with indoor and beach we've been having a lot of success and um, i i kind of felt like that would roll over every season and it gave us a little bit more confidence. I think the tough uh, preseason schedule, you know, kind of rattled us a little bit this year and um, clearly it just hasn't rolled in, but I'm not um, overly concerned about, you know, having a a difficult year, um, you know, beating us down or Mm -hmm. dropping our expectations of trying to chase championships. So Mm -hmm. I think, you know, it's just, we we know we just got to keep putting our heads down and work and, um, to be where we want to be. If I quit this season, I still be the Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast is brought to you by 
weekly Ford Nissan. Tevin Ship joins us from the UT Martin football team, graduate from Smyrna, Tennessee, has three championship rings after last Saturday's win over Southeast Missouri. Congratulations. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Yes, yeah, sir. Show that camera those rings you got <laughs> on right there. How about that? Yeah, looking good. Uh, what was that like Saturday when that time ticked off the clock? Oh, uh, man, it was, it was unbelievable. I know last year it was a Split second uh, interception that kind of sealed it for us. Um, I think the whole team was just ready to go out there and win, especially after the, the coin toss last year. You know, it was kind of a, a rivalry thing with Simo, so we wanted to go out there and handle business, get out there early, and just win that game. Yeah, so I mentioned that last year. Part of this season, that game's uh, storyline was what didn't happen last year, your chance to play them in that coin flip. So that was on your mind going into the game right I man of course that's all we could think about is i mean they got into the playoffs we got sent home sadly like yeah we shared the ring but we felt like we deserved to be in the playoff spot too so that's all we could think about going into that game is how we wanted to dominate when did you start playing football how old were you um i actually played soccer first wow that was my first sport really uh, yeah. so i started playing football when i was eight yeah I, I was a chunky kid so i played o-line yeah. that's all i played my whole life until high school and then I started playing linebacker receiver, and then since then it's just kept going. You know, a lot of kids really do play soccer before they play their sport, football, basketball, whatever. But having that footwork has got to help you in football. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like it helps a little bit. It shows up every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from Smyrna, not too far from Martin, how would you find out about Martin, Tennessee, and UTM? Um, it's actually crazy because I came up here on a camp, and I remember telling my mom I'll never go to Martin ever because I wanted to be in a big city. I didn't, I'm not really a country guy, but – and I said that, and I, it's crazy because God put me here, and I love it. You know, I got three rings. And, uh, you know, I went to a camp after that. Now I'm here. So, you know, I love it here now. I've been here for five years, going on six. So you were at a camp when you were in high school mm -hmm. at Graham Stadium yep. with Coach Simpson. Yep. And after the camp, you said you'll never come to YouTube? <laughs> I said I'll never be there ever. <laughs> now, now look at me. I'm here. <laughs> I bet you don't ever say I'll never do this anymore. Oh, yeah. Oh, Can't yeah. say it no more. <laughs> so what was it like when you first got here? Because you really put in your time. Uh, when I first got here, I remember, I mean, the year before they didn't do too hot. I think they went 2-9 and nine the year before. And I think our draft class was one of the top draft class in D1, like our first, uh, my first uh, freshman year. And uh, um, I remember we all just, we all wanted to put in work. We all wanted to play. We all wanted to play. And uh, we had a couple people transfer out. But, I mean, we got people like Jack Carson that came in with me. Uh, O'Shea was a year after. Like, those players that stayed, stick behind, we, we put in that work. And. You know, we got another ring to, to, to say. Yeah, no for. doubt. And and you mentioned a couple players transferred. We're seeing that more and more in college sports. You you have taken the other route, and I, I thank you for that personally. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it, of course it crosses everyone's mind because mm -hmm. everyone thinks the grass is greener on the other side. But, uh, I mean, I had a lot of linebackers that I looked up to and, and players like John Ford and uh, Fufu Stevens, like the older guys that I just I looked up to. And, you know, they just told me to stay the course and just believe in God. And, you know, this, this is where I'm at, and I think this is where I need to be. So far, what are the memories that you have made 20 years from now when you look back? And I know you still got more memories to make because you got a game and hopefully the playoffs this year. Yeah, yes, yeah. sir. Uh, my, probably one of my favorite memories, I think, my first flight ever was to Montana State. <laughs> and the flight was rocky. I didn't like it. But uh, – it was my first time seeing, like, this huge bear. We went out there with the team, and there's this bear that we went to, and it was huge. And I remember that's probably one thing I'll, I'll remember with the team forever, honestly. Yeah, you were 18 or 19 years old. Yeah, yeah I was young. Yeah. I was young. That's the thing. People don't realize flying with football, there's a bunch of guys on the plane. Man. And a lot of those guys on that first trip freshman year are flying for the first time. <laughs> yeah, nerves are, are out there. Yeah, well, definitely. Like, I remember we just hit a little turbulence, and I, and I already don't <laughs> like heights. So that, that kind of threw me off a little bit, too. I was kind of scared in the sky. But I definitely got there safe, obviously. I want to talk about the Southeast Missouri game. Um, they score. I mean, they kind of got the momentum coming out of the gate. Yeah, yeah. I remember I remember seeing that, you know, ball was a little behind the receiver, got tipped. It's crazy. You know, you know how football is. It happens. But uh, I remember just running up and down that sideline screaming, like, you know what? Like, it doesn't matter. Like, we, we still got this. The game is in our hands. Just the first couple seconds. And I looked on that sideline. I don't think anyone was worried at all. I think we, we knew what we came to show up to do. You've won some wild games this year. Oh, a lot of a lot of close games, which yeah. we we've blown people out. You know, we've we've been down. We've we've won in overtime. So you know, I, I think this team is capable of anything we put our mind to. Because I mean, we've won in different ways. So mm -hmm. so obviously we're winners. We find a way to win. One, you're resilient is yeah. a word that Coach yeah. Simpson likes to use. Yeah, definitely. Um, other words that you would use to describe this year's team. Um, 
funny. I would say funny <laughs> on, the, on the first hand, but hardworking and, and, and determined. I think everyone out there is determined just to go give their best. I love hardworking and determined and resilient. Why funny? Uh, man, I, since I've been here, the team's been funny, but I feel like every year they get funnier. Somehow a transfer yeah. comes in, and it's just <laughs> we're always cutting up, having a good time. It's like a family. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just family all the time. Well, there's something to be said about having fun and succeeding at the same time, being relaxed yet being extremely focused. Yeah. And if you got that funny guy on the team, you can do that. Yeah, you yeah. definitely can. You definitely yeah. can. Who's the comedian on the team? Uh Dalen Dotson. <laughs> he definitely is probably one of the – Chris Hunter, too. Yeah. Those two are probably one of the funniest guys I've ever met in my yeah. life, definitely. Has Coach Simpson ever made you laugh? Oh, oh all the yeah. time. Oh, okay. He said something other – I can't remember what he said, but he had, he had his laughing for sure. Uh, talk about going into this Saturday and Sanford coming up in Birmingham. Um, I, I just want people to realize they're in, a, they're in a really good conference this year. So, even though the record's 4-4, four and four, we, can't, we can't undermine them. So – they're, they're in there with Furman, who's a top 25 team. They're in there with Chat, who's a top 25 team. Western Carolina is good. I think they were top 25 at once. So just because they're 4-4, four and four, they played hard competition. So it's not going to be an easy game, but a lot rise in this game for our future. So we got to make sure we go in there determined and ready to win, not, not just underlooking them. You sound like a coach. I mean, I've been around the game for a yeah. while, you know. So, you know, I've, again, five years. I've been, been around Coach Sim. We talk a little bit. So, What yeah. do you want to do when you graduate? Uh, actually, I'm working on my master's right now. I graduate in the summer okay, with yeah. uh, sports coaching. Yeah. So I'm hoping, you know, if if I'm ever done, if I don't play in the NFL, that I could GA at Martin and actually start coaching. All night. I mean, yeah. and a lot of folks have done that, and it's been a nice path to yeah. a lot of places, so. including Martin. You got your first career sack, right? That was my first career we, sack. So yeah. we, I was in the booth. We were calling the game. We were really surprised <laughs> that it was your first career sack. Take us through the play. Uh. You know, Coach Blitz has been scheming, scheming up SEMO. We put in a play just for this week for them. Uh, my man was the running back. I seen him block. The the gap was wide open. I just shot it. Next thing I know, I was there. So I was I was super excited. First career sack ever. So, so big game. Have you been close before? I've, I've always been close, but they always manage to get it out or I get a pressure. <laughs> I'm like, man, I just I just want that one. So I'm I'm glad I can make it a big time game. Last thing, Tevin. What do you want our fans to know? Um, the team loves this city. I love this city coaches of this city and you know we go out there at hardy graham and we play our hardest for martin you know so we enjoy when people show up to the game we enjoy when they're there we enjoy when y'all have energy so you know just thank y'all for being there for the third ring and we're gonna make this playoff push for y'all awesome wonderfully said and thank you we yes, appreciate sir. all your hard appreciate work you too. for having me if I quit this season, I still be the skyhawk sports talk podcast is brought to you by weekly ford nissan Back on Skyhawk Sports Talk with Ken K. Dent, quarterback for the UT Martin football team. I've been interviewing players, student athletes, for over 20 years, and no one has put a headset on and wanted to know if they could put the microphone on the left side instead of the right because it flips. Ken K. asked, and I was a little surprised, but you explained to me you're used to wearing a headset. Yeah, I'm used to wearing a headset. I like it on the left. I don't know why. It just feels yeah. more comfortable that way. And uh, like I said, uh, the signal, the signal caller on our sideline. He's always got it on the right, and we're always middle middle of the game, switching it from right and left. Yeah. So I can have it on the left. He can have it on the right. We, you know, we see that all the time. For those of us who haven't played football, and the coaching staff's got the headset on. Some of the players have got the headset on. What's going on in that headset? So that's just basically talking with uh, Coach Partridge, offense coordinator, mm -hmm. up in the box, and he's just kind of he got a little bit better uh, view of the game up there, and he yeah. he's he's helping me see what you know. He's helping me see what he's seeing in the box. And, you know, he's got a lot of experience doing that. And he's got also got all the defensive coaches up there. So, I mean, they're not really missing anything up there. There's an art, though. I guess I've, I, I want to ask you because I've never had that headset on. I watch the coaches talk. But there's an art to that communication because you don't have a lot of time. And you've got you've to have this chemistry and quick communication where you fully understand what's going on. Yeah, I know. It, it really is an art because you, you, you really got to think about, too, is, is you know, in a game, you really want to be watching what the offense is doing, but you really got to pay attention to the defense as well. And so, like, keying into those where the safety is, you know, located on the field and where the where the ends are at. And that's why you got to have multiple guys in the box and, and um, you know, in the sky box looking at, you know, certain – you know, keying on certain things. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the kind of the most important part is just being able to 
because, you know, they say uh, the quarterback's got the best ticket on the field, you know, the best seat in the house. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes we don't – we you know, we get caught up in the moment, don't get to see everything we'd like to see. But mm -hmm. so when we go to the sideline and get on the headset, it's, it's, it's really beneficial to hear from the – you know, from the coaches upstairs, hey, this is where they're this is where they're at, and then you get back, you know, that next drive, and you can really kind of okay, I, I see what they're seeing up there. Yeah, it helps you out a lot. Well, you know, football is so complicated, and there's so many players and things going on. From the press box, you really can see it because you're oh, elevated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From the sideline, I personally struggle. You're used to it, but from that quarterback position, you get the view that we get when we play Madden or mm -hmm. we play video games. Yep, it's a phenomenal view. Yeah, it's the it's the best. You know, it's funny because when I was at Ole Miss, they they used to, you know, if you didn't carry out your fake or anything like that, and, you know, you hand the ball off to the running back and you don't carry out your fake or anything like that. They used to be like, you got the best ticket in the, you know, in the stadium, you know. Uh, and that was kind of some encouragement not to, yeah. to carry, you know, do a good job carrying your fake out and play the game instead of watching it from back there. Yeah. How tall are you? Uh, I'm about – I like to say I'm 6'5". Yeah, so you see pretty well. I do, yes, Because if you're 5'10", it's tougher to see back no, there. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Um, so you were at Ole Miss. Uh, talk about that experience. Um, it was it – was, it was a – you know, a wild experience in terms um, of my career, you know, shaping at least because, you know, but I, I really, you know, took for granted everything I could, you know, I mean, I didn't actually, I take that back. I really appreciated how much I got to take in when I was there. You know, a lot of people now, they get to a school like that and they don't get a lot of playing time and, mm -hmm. and they, they leave early. I was there with, four, you know, four different offensive coordinators. I got there, I was recruited by Phil Longo who, um, was a you know he had a he's got a good he's got a good career going on right now kind of you know in college football still I don't know where he's at right now but he's he, I think his last place was at Wisconsin but he was great he recruited me at Ole Miss so I got to kind of early on got to learn his offense and where he was gonna shape me into being a quarterback at Ole Miss and then when I get there he gets fired or I think he takes a, takes the job at UNC and Rich Rodriguez comes in and Rich Rod was a he was a he was a good he was a good offensive coordinator. He knew run scheme really really well. Um, really kind of jump started my career in like seeing like understanding the game. He you know he he was really knowledgeable in the offensive side of the ball. And then um, that that coaching staff got fired. That was after my freshman season. And Lane comes in with uh, coach coach Levy, and that's when I really kind of you know, got my eyes open to football in terms of they really truly brought in the un understanding defenses and the the importance of the, like the fine details. Like there was no T's that weren't crossed, no I's that weren't dotted and how we did things at Ole Miss offensively. And, you know, it, it shows, you know, they struggled this weekend mm -hmm. a little bit against Georgia, but I mean, they, they've been one of the most successful offenses yeah. in the country for the, you know, since, since coach Kiffin's been there and, and it really does go to, you know, prove about how much detail goes into – they they really do a good job. And that's when I really learned – started learning offense and, like, learning really defense as well. We would we would take – we would take a whole month out of the year or kind of in the spring, early summer, and it would just be – we would we would take all the – off. we wouldn't even be learning offense. It would just be learning defense and how defensive coaches – teach defensive players in college football wow yeah so that's all we would do yeah. and then and then we'd get back into offense at later on after that and so um i think i think those four years you know my dad you know sometimes always wishes i would have maybe gotten out, gotten out of Ole Miss a little bit earlier but at the end of the day i got my degree at Ole Miss i ended up getting there four years getting my degree um you know my brother and my sister were both at Ole Miss and you know, in my times of being there as well, so I got to be with them, and I learned more football than I could really know what to do with. Yeah. And you know, also with you know, the, having that COVID year and having that red shirt year, knowing that I have two years after I graduate, were also really beneficial in knowing that, hey, I've got a little bit of time, you know, to. You really, you really, you're right. You went through a lot. The changes in the coaches, the COVID mm -hmm. year, which was crazy for all of us, and the uncertainty of that. Um, you could might, might you coach someday? Um, I, I've thought about it. I, I, I haven't really been able to pin it down yet, but mm -hmm. um, it definitely has crossed my mind. There's been, I think it was funny because Coach Coach Levy, who's now at uh, uh, 
Oklahoma, he used to always be like, you're, you're going to be a coach one day. And I was like, I don't know. And, uh, and then Coach Kiffin, when I told him, I actually didn't even tell Coach Kiffin I was getting in the transfer portal at the time because he didn't even know. He had not known that I would gotten in. And then we met, and he was like, he goes, I, he goes, I didn't know you were getting in the portal. And he was like, I was hoping you were going to stay one more year, um, kind of kind of help us around and then I was going to get you know start you into the path of maybe becoming a coach with a, on, on the staff and I was just kind of like well I, I mean I got two more years of eligibility left and I think I'm going to I think I'm going to go play somewhere so yeah and that's kind of how that ended so one of the things obviously one of the reasons you come to UT Martin is get those playing memories because mm -hmm. you've got you had great yeah. memories they were just different yeah. than so what memories have you made so far here? Oh, I mean, I mean, let's just start with what happened this weekend in terms yeah. of the conference championship. But I mean, other than that, it's just been, it's been so, it's been, it's just fo so fun just being on the field and being, you know, being able to take a team, you know, to a conference championship and like having, you know, that's been so great. You know, I've had such a great defense that's been able to handle me all, all year, help me all year in terms of ho holding, holding, you know, opposing offenses yeah. to minimal points as they yeah. can. And then I've, and then I've had, I've had a lot of, it's funny cause I've got a lot of experience up front too on my offensive line. You know, I'm the same age as, or if not older than some of those guys mm -hmm. like Gavin and Lamar, you know, same age probably, but um, they've done, you know, we, we, it, it was just such a good fit. I feel like in terms of, coming here into UT Martin and the memories we've made this year has just been I mean they've been they've been really well I mean you know going to Sanford that was a that was a good job because that was one thing I was it was it was funny because because you know Ole Miss played Georgia and Sanford this season and yeah. that was like the one SEC stadium I had not been to yet yeah. I'd been to almost every single one you know being at Ole Miss and traveling and I really wanted to go to Sanford and when I tra transferred to UT Martin I was like that was our home opener so that was yeah. a, that, that was an awesome that was, was an awesome a bucket deal for me thing. yeah, yeah. A bucket list so um I really enjoyed that memory a lot that was a yeah. that was a great time um and then just moving on down the schedule I mean you can just pick and choose which one all the games uh, you want they've been they've been great you have the overtime yeah. victory in yeah eastern illinois and you have you know yeah. you have some of the yeah you know the close close wins and losses there in the middle and then you have some of these these big ones that we've had at the end like the you know you have the sports center top 10 yeah. catch and yeah. then you have this final one that was just a you know a blowout and it's been a know, crazy memorable season like you played memorable games yeah, that really if you're has. at those games you 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 don't forget were you are you surprised you've got as many rushing yards this season as you have I'm, um i'm I, impressed yeah i mean it's it's funny because a lot is a lot of people don't really see me as a runner but i did i did I, you know i ran a lot in high school too i i think i about had a I think I had just a little under a thousand yards rushing in okay. my, my senior year of high school, yeah. and not and it's really never because they're they're not really designed quarterback runs. I think it's just um, you know Joe Burrow is is somebody I really love to watch. You know, I mean he's a really solid quarterback to watch in mm -hmm. terms of his just pocket discipline and the way he carries himself and the confidence he has, the way he prepares and stuff like that. And he, he but he's kind of the same way in terms of me in terms of like we're not you know as a defense sees it we're not quarterbacks that you're going to be like hey he's he's a really good runner right mm -hmm. but that that makes running the ball for us in games a lot easier yeah because it, it, it you know when the pocket breaks down or something like that it, it just it sometimes it just opens up that way and no one's really expecting it so that's i think that's the biggest thing about my running ability is no one really thinks that i'm going to run the ball and then i do and, and then, then I, you run and, and you then walk it into the end zone yeah. we're like yeah well thank you kincaid certainly a pleasure good luck uh, i guess my last question is what's the goal i mean you got one more game hopefully the playoffs what do you want to accomplish yeah so i mean i want we want to we want to win we want to win this last game and have you know you know just 10 and what are we nine two mm -hmm. and you know have a really good chance of being in the playoffs and i think i think with this defense you know they say defense wins championships i think with this defense if we if, if you know we keep this offense rolling i think i think we can go as far as we want to go in the playoffs yeah you know, i really do believe that and uh so i think that's the goal and the plan if i quit this season I still be the greatest. skyhawk sports talk podcast is brought to you by Weekly Ford Nissan. Coach Jason Simpson here at Skyhawk Sports Talk. Zach's and Martin. I'm Chris Brinkley with Coach. And uh, 
When Kincaid sat down, he asked me if he could put the microphone on the left side instead of the right. And I forgot coaches and quarterbacks wear headsets all the time. Do you yeah. have a left side, right side microphone? Yeah, preference? left side. Is there a reason, or just what you've always done? You know, I don't. Is that how the there? I wear the one, um, you know, the one ear one, and so it just seems yeah. like that's how it's built. I guess I don't know. If not, I manipulate it to make it come yeah. on the side. Well, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, but football coaches are kind of particular because that's what you're used to. Yeah. Well, uh, that's funny. He did the same thing. Yeah. Now, let's you know the elephant in the room here. Davis not being here. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rumor is that uh, smoking that cigar, uh, that championship cigar after the game, he's still got a 48-hour uh, stomach ache uh, from all That's that right. smoke. But, no, we yeah. miss him. It was really cool to see him down on the field after the game. Congratulations but, uh, on the championship. Well, you know what? Thank you. Yeah. And thank you. And, um, you know, a couple things that were really neat, Chris, were um, first let's just start the way the guys played. Uh, what a great job by our assistant coaches. What a great job by our players. Um, you know, <laughs> you got a hundred something guys, all right. So you got practice all week. Everybody's got different things going on, different things that are going on in their life. Um, you know, but that was a very focused group uh, that were was determined uh, with one common goal. And it's very difficult to get uh, a team to do that on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, I just had to get out of their way and let them go. And you know, even with the you know the unfortunate the pick six and you're down, and uh, you know to see them go back out there and play. So really great credit to the players and their focus of what they wanted to get accomplished uh, for that. And then the next thing is to no, I mean in the back of my mind, right? We understand that Gardner Webb will you know will will probably win this week, and and, and they'll have the automatic bid. Uh, and that's disappointing because that came down the last you know last play of the game, and we controlled our own destiny with that. But uh, for these players, for the Tevin Ships and, and Dot and O'Shea and Lamar and Gavin and, and, and Sam Franklin, those guys that have been here, this is the third time in a, in a row, right, that they've been the top of, of, yeah. of the league. And to do that, 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 that says a lot of great things about, uh, about them as individuals, about them as a collective group, and about the assistant coaches and, 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 and the program. And I'm real proud to be a part of that. Also, and I, I mentioned it during the broadcast, but in your post-game interview, you, it's more than this season. This is a couple of you, decades of hard work coming together. No. What, well, do you, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, you think about, um, you know, we won the first one, mm -hmm. right? And we had some good teams uh, those next several years, okay, over, you know, the first ten years. And there was a lot of, I think, in 08 we were second, you know, or tied for second or something. And then there was a – you know, and so it's just hard. Mm -hmm. It's just hard. I get it. The league is different now, but there's still ten teams in the league, and 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 resources and geographical things have changed over the last uh, you know decade and stuff. Uh, but to, but to be a part of a of a first place at the top of the conference for three years in a row, yeah. uh, you know, it's 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 very difficult. It's a different it's a different management style. It's a different mindset. Uh, you know, to to. to uh, that the kids, that the coaches, that the community. I mean, you know, people expect us to win. Yeah. They expect us to score a lot of points. They expect us to, you know, to stop people. They expect us to win a certain way, mm -hmm. okay? So sometimes with that, there's anxiety that comes with that, okay? It's almost like a relief uh, to, yeah. to win, okay? And, you know, you hear – and I'm not comparing us to Clemson or Alabama or anything like that, guys. That's not what I'm saying. But I heard Saban say that this week about, you know, this year's team. You know, last year's team, it was almost like a sigh of relief, you know, when they would do certain things where this year his expectations were not uh, to certain extents. And, and where our expectations have always, you know, been there, but there are new faces. And their mm -hmm. quarterback, this is our fourth different quarterback, four consecutive years. Wow. Yeah. You know, so uh, – but Dalen Dotson and O'Shea Baker, those guys, they had the same expectations and, and, and goals. To, and we talked about having a season of significance, right? And, you know, so when they leave here, when they come back 15 years from now, 10 years from now to visit, right, they were on a three-year uh, in a row, uh, you know, top of the league championship team. And I'm real proud of that. Yeah, and, you know, and, and some of those guys that were seniors a few years ago who were mentors to the players who are seniors now, and even some of the coaches that have gone on and helped recruit these guys. Like, yeah, it is all about the season, but there's this ripple effect that goes. Yeah. Even Dee Pritchett's part of this championship this year. Mm -hmm. um, no, you know how I feel about that. No, yeah. she is, 100%. And, and, you know, and all the way back from – 
different relationships and things that she has done for the program back all the way to 06. Those things still carry on, Amen. you know, to now. But yeah. really neat, the, the, the text and congratulations that I get from former coaches that were here. Uh, I was talking to Adam Lechtenberg this morning as the head coach at Central Connecticut, and he was on the staff here because he knows, you know, he knows how hard it is. So, uh, you know, Derek Carr, you know, yeah. texts me, and he's yeah. like, hey, proud alumnus. And, uh, you know, that's awesome. He played here, coached here. Um, you know, so that that – that is some things I'm proud of. I was proud to watch the kids celebrate. That was that was very um, moving to me to see their smiles on their faces and and to be the best at something. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, you know, and I can't wait to get the team meeting today because you know we started this campaign. And we said, okay, this is what we want to do. Okay, we came up short of, of being undefeated in in, our, in the conference. Okay, we still got some things we need to get done in order to get to the playoffs. But this was a goal. This wasn't the final goal. This was a goal on the way to a larger goal. And um, so, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing them respond and go back to practice this week. I've, I don't know if I've ever given you advice, but I'm going to. I'm listening. And I'm, I'm listening. fixing to throw it at you hard now. <laughs> I'm listening. When the ice water is coming at you, <laughs> don't relax. Because your first effort well, to escape it was really good. Yeah. And then you relaxed. Yeah, I think and I then it was over. Well, I was kidding with them, Gio. And, that, uh, and I said, come on, guys. I saw them, you know, in the last minute and a half, okay, kind of. And I said, come on, guys. This is the third one in a row. Why would we, you know, why would you do this? We want something more than this. I thought I could talk them out of it for that. But, but there was some satisfaction that came out of that. Because there's Gio, and he's been here four years. Been on three championship teams in a row, okay. But there was elation in him. And there's appreciation because he knows how much the coaches sacrifice as well yeah. and, and the grind that we go through and stuff. So it was one of those deals to where I would have been fine if it didn't happen, but I did appreciate the fact that they recognized there's a lot of sacrifices and it was a kind of a culmination of, of um, you know, a little bit of relief. We got it done, okay? But I think it was also a celebration of the – of the dominating factor of, of the fashion of which they got the win on Saturday. Oh, no doubt. And last year's uh, subplot yeah. playing no, into yeah. no, there's, there's a lot into it. Yeah. No, exactly. So let's let's look ahead. So at least a co-regular season champion. You have mm -hmm. one game remaining. It's outside of the conference. Right. It's against Sanford, a team that used to be in the conference, mm -hmm. against a coach you used to coach against, yeah. Coach Hatcher at Murray. Mm -hmm. Set up this game for us, and what is the importance of winning this game? Well, first to start, uh, Chris Boone, who was here with us for That's five right. years, is yeah. the defense coordinator there. Mm -hmm. All right, think a lot of him. He was my first defense coordinator that I hired here and did a great job. Brandon Cooper is the assistant coach on the defense staff who played here for us in our 06 yeah. championship team and coached here. He's on the staff. And, and uh, you know, it's a quality program. Uh, I mean, I think they went two or three rounds deep in the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, one of our graduate assistants, Brandon, uh, was on that team last year. So, uh, you know, we're very familiar with it. When you look at them on tape, you say, well, they're five and five. Well, they're f five of their losses, okay, one loss to Auburn, okay, and then four other ranked teams that come out, out of their league, Furman, uh, Mercer, uh, Chattanooga, and, um, and um, Western Carolina. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's their four losses uh, with Auburn in there. So that's why they're, they're five and five. So this is, a, this is a challenge. This is one of the better teams we played. And I know you hear me say that every week, but that's how the, the schedule unfolds. And they're a team that's going to, you know, throw the ball 45, 50 times. Okay, and statistically the pass is, is we're built to stop the run. Okay, and and then chase the pass, and so we'll have to modify some things this week to, to eliminate the big plays, and then defensively they have a unique front, uh, a robber type front, some of the same things that Gardner Webb did. Uh, they're difficult to, you know, they, it's a unique uh, defense that you don't see every week. So a lot of preparation will go into this week, and you know my talk to the conference, the, the, the team is this: you win this week and go nine and two. Okay, all right. And I can't say 100%, right, because, I mean, Kurt and I both know we, we're not in those rooms, but if you win and you're 9-2, and two, I'm going to say 99.9% .9 we're in. Yeah. Okay, and it's going to be great. If you don't, okay, we're 8-3, and three, great season, okay, but now we'll have to wait to Sunday morning uh, to see how that committee, um, you know, who else won, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. how, how does it unfold. Um, you know, and so that's some anxiety that goes with that. And so, um, but that's, that's, the, that's, that's what you're looking at. Uh, you know, and what we'll do is, is probably, I hadn't talked to Kurt about it, but my plan would be this. We win, then let's have a part, let's have a, a showing party and, and, and see where we're going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, the reality of it is if, if, if we don't, okay, I still have, you know, great – hopefully, you know, I think we'll still be ranked, okay, and after getting shut out last year, hopefully that – carries on you got eight wins and some quality wins in there of going out of conference um you know i guess uh you know uh, kurt and i watch it on uh, espn and we get a thumbs up we'll put we'll put you know put the text out to the team and say hey meeting this afternoon let's roll something of that nature is how we'll get ready to go and but you know what it's still exciting uh and uh, you know this is where we when we go recruit these kids we say hey you're coming to a place where we can get to that ncaa tournament okay it doesn't – it's like uh, – I've said it a thousand times. It's like Loyola of Chicago in the NCAA men's basketball tournament playing Duke. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, when Krzyzewski was the head coach and Cameron, it doesn't matter. They beat them that one time, right? right. They go to the next round. Yep. Right? And the pool gets cut in half, you know, every you know every week. So, guess what? You come here, you have an opportunity to play for a national championship. Mm-hmm. Okay? And so, you know, so hopefully I get a chance to, to be with these kids and we get a chance to do that. Well said. Thank you, Coach Simpson. Much Thank you, man. Davis, get yourself well. No more cigars, bud. That's right. <laughs> If I quit this season, I still be the greatest. Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast is brought to you by Weekly Ford Nissan.